Good afternoon and welcome to Praise With Purpose. Today is Friday, hallelujah glory. It is rodeo day in Holmes County. It's, the parade is probably going on right now. But I am so thankful, so thankful that God chose to wake us up today. That means he's got an assignment for you today. Amen. Uh, a purpose for your life. Will you choose to wake up and pick up your cross and follow after him? Amen. I'm excited about what's happening, right? God is so good. He is so faithful. Every year at this time, our sleepy little town in Bonifay, Florida, wakes up, right? It's rodeo. There's about, about 3,000 horses legitimately in town right now. I avoid going to town right now. But there's a lot going on. But it does not take away from this word of God. Amen. We can get distracted. It's a joy to get to live this life. Amen. It's an amazing time to be alive. Oh, I thank God that he chose this season for us to be alive, right? Why? Because we get to usher in the coming of the Lord. I get excited about it. But he's teaching us through his word. Today, we're going to talk about accountability up or down. Mmm. Yeah, buddy. See, in the Word of God, we're in 2 Samuel chapter 13, and it begins to talk about David's children. All right, we've done gone through all of the things that have happened with David, and now it begins to discuss David's children. And the Word of the Lord says that, that Absalom, okay, was one of David's kids, right? We're going to talk more about him as this word goes on. And that he had a sister, right, whose name was Tamar. Now, David had many wives, right? So um, you had to understand that David had one wife who had two sons, two had one son and one daughter, had Absalom and had Tamar. Now, he had another wife that had a son, and that son's name was Amnon, all right? And the word of the Lord talks about this. We got to get real and realize that life happens, right? We've got to understand that there are things that this word of God deals with that are reality in the world we live in today. Sin was not just starting today, right? Incest, rape, abuse, all of these things were present in the time of David, okay? That's why we have the hope of Christ Jesus within us to let people know that you can be set free from things that happen to you. You can be. There is hope in Christ Jesus today that somebody's got to be willing to talk about it. Somebody's got to be willing to dig into the things that nobody else wants to discuss, but that are present everywhere around us. And that's what we're talking about today. We're going to begin to, to have open discussion about some of these things that took place in David's children's lives. So the word of God says that Amnon had a lust. He had a desire for his half sister. Okay? It's reality. He did. He had a burn and he had a flesh problem, a lust problem for his half-sister Tamar. Okay? Now, we want to say, wow, that's horrible. That's gross. That's, that's, who would even think about that? Let me tell you, the flesh wants what the flesh wants, right? It's time that we comprehend and we understand that your sin is no greater than that sin. Mm-hmm. Your lie that you told this morning that you thought was a little white lie, that, that, that hidden thing that you did that nobody knows about, that gluttony where you did a whole line of Oreos after everybody went to bed last night, yeah, that's on the same level as Amnon having a desire for his half-sister. Let's just put it all out there, right? Sin is sin. And sin is never satisfied. It isn't. But God, but God will always, always give you a space of grace to deal, to deal with every sin, to deal with every temptation, 
See, the New Testament tells us, he says, there's no temptation. There's no temptation that's come on you that it's not common. There's nothing. Jesus faced it all. He dealt with it all. He said, he'll make a way of escape for you that you'll be able to bear it. That way of escape is Jesus. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about accountability up. Because when that flesh hits you, who you run to determines everything. Who you open up to determines outcomes. It does. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to think about it. We don't want to deal with it. But the reality is you got people in your life right now that if you're facing a temptation, you know if I call them up, boy, they're going to get on the hotline with me. <laughs> there are women of God that I know that I love dearly. But if I'm in a mess, I can't call them. I cannot. I cannot. If I call them, they're going to say, Come get me. I got the shovel and the bag. Let's go bury them. Let's go take care of Right? There's people that I know I cannot call for accountability. Why? Because they're in the flesh. And their response is always going to be, let me help you get the lust that you want. That's what happened here in the Word of God. The Word of God says that Amnon went to Jonadab. Okay, this guy hits his cousin. His cousin sees that he is not eating. He sees that he's not um, doing well. He sees that he looks bad. He says he comes up to him and he's like, dude, what's up with you? And the Word of God says that Amnon tells him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. That's chapter 13, verse 4. And Jonadab said unto him, mm -hmm. lay down in the bed, act like you're more sick than you are. Tell your daddy, the king, mm -hmm, that, that you want her to bring you something good to eat. Right? Right? See, there's a Jonadab in everybody's life. There's somebody out there that you can call up, that you can let them know your innermost, deepest, darkest lust. And they're going to jump in there with you. I got women in my life. I'm telling you right now, I got three in my head that I'm thinking about right now. I love them to Jesus. I do. But I could call them right now and say, you know what? This rodeo, it's got me thinking about my old life. And, you know, I just I really would like to have a, I don't know, a Bud Light right now. And you know what they'd say? Come to my house. I got a six-pack waiting on you. We won't tell nobody. Just come pop a top. You can almost smell it, Stacy, right now. Just pop it. Come on, girl. I got you. I got you. Come on. That's reality. That's reality. See, Amnon knew what he was about to do was wrong. He knew it. He knew it was wrong. It was all kind of ways wrong. And yet he opened up to Jonadab, who said, hmm, you want your half-sister? Really? I know it goes against every law. I know it goes against God. I know it goes against anything. But honey, if you want it, let's make a way. I tell you what, you just get in the bed and act like you're sick and then ask for her to come in and then you can have her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beware the Jonadabs. And the reality is, this is what took place, right? The Word of God says that Jonadab told him to do that. And then what did he do? He left the scene. Mm, you got them people in your life, them pot stirrers. Ooh, you know they're there, right? It's one of the seven things that God hates is someone who sows discord among the brethren. You got people all the time, boy, they'll run in. They'll give you advice. They'll tell you what you need to do. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, leave that man. Yeah, leave him. He deserves it. Yeah, leave him. Key his car. Yeah. Yeah, key is, yeah, buddy. If he don't do something good to you, do something bad, worse to him. Yep, you got to, honey, if you don't stand up for yourself, nobody else will. And the whole time you're like, yeah, I'll be glad to do it. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And then that person flees the scene. They're gone. They ain't part of it. They just come and whispered in your ear to soothe your flesh. And then they're gone. They take no responsibility, no accountability. They're not there for the fallout. They're not, not there to pick up the broken pieces with you. Honey, they just swoop in and give you their own advice in the flesh and then they're gone. Mm. John and Deb ain't nowhere in this at all. He comes, he tells Amnon, that's what you need to do. And then he leaves. The word of the Lord says that David, 
came to check on his son, Amnon. He came to check on him. That's the space of grace. God will always give you a space of grace to do the right thing. I had a CNA that I miss so much. Deborah Thornton, if you're ever listening to me, I love you and I miss you. She said, do the right thing, Miss Stacy. Do the right thing. So you always get that opportunity to do the right thing. David came, came to Amnon, and he saw him in the bed sick, and he asked him, well, what was wrong? See, the reality is Amnon probably thought that his dad, that he couldn't tell his daddy, oh, that I got lust, that I got a flesh, I got lust, I want my, I want my half-sister. He was... He was so ashamed of it, he didn't want to tell the king. But in reality, the king had already gone through his own lust problem. Hello? David had already dealt with gross, dark sin and lust, sexual sin that ended up in death, right? He'd already been there. He would not have condemned Amnon. He, he, he could have helped him. He could have. He was the king. See, he had that opportunity to accountability up. Spiritually speaking, there are people in your life, there are spiritual mothers and fathers in your life. Honey, I, I, I have a sister Frida check in my brain. I don't know about y'all. She is my spiritual mother. I love that woman of God. God brought Karen Forehand to me in 1993. She led me to Jesus. Loved me unconditionally. God took her home. But he gave me Sister Frida. And, and I got a Sister Frida check in my brain that if I'm ever questioning something, if I'm ever tempted by something, all I got to do is I got to, I can call her. Or I could even think about, think about her in my brain, what she would say. Holiness or hell, sister. Holiness or hell, sissy. Like I hear it. I hear it. I hear it in my brain. I know there are people in my life, my life, I'll just get God honest with you, there are very few, but there are people in my life that I know that if I need to do accountability up, I'm going to call my pastor, Jared Jenkins. That's who I'm going to call. If I can't get a hold of it, I'm going to submit to my husband first, and you better believe Chris Harrison's going to accountability me up <laughs> in a heartbeat and a half. But he doesn't work. I'll call my pastor. I'll call Regina Sellers. I'll call Frida Clark. I'll call people in my life that I know love me dearly, but who will speak truth to me. See, Amnon had that opportunity. He did. He did. I'll call Tammy Waters. I'll get her at work. Sis, I need you. I need you. I just need you. I just need to talk. And she'll just look at me and say, well, and then out flows the word. The word. Don't give me your opinion. Opinions send people to hell. You give me this word. You give me this word. Because I need to hear it when my flesh is tempted. See, the only hope we have is Christ Jesus within us. And the only thing we have to stand on is this word. And it's so easy to get angry, to get angry. And to, to feel like, oh, I don't want to go to them because I know what they're going to say. Honey, if you know what they're going to say, then you might as well go ahead and do the right thing. He was right there with his own daddy. And he did not. Imagine. That's why the New Testament tells us that what? That when we confess our faults one to another, healing comes. Healing comes. See, the devil's playground is the darkness of your mind. You need to know that. The devil's playground is the darkness of your mind. Inside your mind is dark. But when you speak it, it comes to the light. 
And when it comes to the light, darkness has to flee. It cannot stay. You cannot have darkness when light comes in. So when you bring things to the light and you expose it, the darkness leaves. Okay? But you got to be willing to do that, to allow the light in. And that means accountability up. Accountability up. Accountability up. Your choice today. Your choice. There are Jonah dabs all around you. They'll, they'll tell you exactly what to do in the flesh. And then they'll leave you hanging to fix the mess. But you can always go to the king. See, we have an advocate. We have an advocate. We have a high priest who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities, who sits at the right hand of Father God to ever plead intercession for us. We have the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he comes to us in his unconditional love for you. He comes to us and provides a space of grace for you to have that moment of verbal diarrhea. Jesus, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I got lost. I want to do this thing, and I know it's wrong, and I don't know how not to, and I need your help. Oh, if he would have just said all of that, what mercy and what grace David would have shown his son. But instead, he spilled it to Jonadab. And it just goes downhill from there. It ended in death. It ended, oh, in a mess, in a mess. But it started with this one thing. He was given his first space of grace to make it right. And he chose not to. Today, if you're sitting here saying, oh, I got a lust problem. I don't want to tell nobody because I'm so ashamed. Oh, it's worse than wanting my stepsister or my half-sister. It's gross and it's dark and it's nasty and I'm so ashamed. Okay, get it out. Accountability up. Find somebody, repent, talk to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is there to provide mercy and grace. Know who your Jonadabs are. Know who they are. And avoid them. Avoid them. If their first response is, well, I'll tell you what I would do. Really? Mm -hmm. No, honey, I want to know what the Word tells me to do. If you don't know this man, Jesus, and you've been trying to fight this war on your own, it's okay. That can all change today. There's hope for you. There's Jesus. If you say, oh, sis, this is, this is me. I need to know more. I want to talk more. Reach out. I got a whole mobile missions ministry team that would love, love to reach out to you. There are no excuses. Who do you run to? Who do you run to? Who do you accountability to? Up or down? Oh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. God, it's a living word. Oh, how I praise you, God, how I worship you today. There's none other worthy, God, to be praised. Lord, anoint us this day to see, to realize who we seek wise counsel from, who we allow to whisper into our ears, God. Oh, God, there's gross sin in all of us, and there's no sin bigger than the other. Help us, God, to know, to realize the importance of confession and repentance and bringing it to the King. Oh, that you're not going to beat us down, God. You're not a God of punishment. We tie your hands to punishment when we refuse your grace. Help us, God. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, I love you. Amen, amen.